Hello, in this video, you're gonna learn about something called an array. And before I explain what it is, I'm gonna pose a problem to you so that you can understand why we need it. Let's say that you have a class called deck, which represents a deck of playing cards. Inside this class, you wanna put the data representing the cards. Let's say each card is represented by a string like this. And in case you didn't know, there are 52 cards in a deck of playing cards. So if you were to keep track of those 52 strings, you might start declaring variables like this. Well, that's going to get out of hand pretty quickly. Here's an even bigger problem. What if you had to keep track of thousands of people in an employee database? You can't just create a variable or constant to keep track of each employee. Swift has some collection types that can be used to handle collections of data. An array is one of these collection types. Let's see how we can use an array with our playing cards example. Rather than declaring a separate variable for each piece of data, you can simply declare a single variable to keep track of a single array. An array has slots where you can store data. Each slot is almost like a mini variable that keeps track of a piece of data. Each slot is also given an index number starting from zero. To retrieve the data, you simply ask the array to return the data at a specific index. To keep track of data, you can ask the array to use a specific index to keep track of that piece of data. Just like a variable, if an array index is already pointing to a piece of data and you assign another piece of data to that index, it's going to track your new piece of data but stop tracking the old one. All right, now that you know the basic gist of what an array is, let's go into the playground and see how the Swift syntax looks. All right, so here we have a fresh playground and I'm going to declare a new array so you can see what the Swift syntax looks like. So I'm going to declare a single variable, let's just call this my array, and I am going to assign to it an array. Uh, you start by using two angle brackets like that. In between those two angle brackets or square brackets, you put the slots of your array. Each slot is separated by a comma. So just by doing that, I have two slots. This first one would be slot zero, and this one on the right side of that comma would be slot one. So let's put our playing card data in here. And instead of saying something like ace of clubs, I'm just going to ignore the suit for this example. And let's just put a string, let's just call it ace, right? And in index number one, I am going to put uh, king. So in my array right here, I have two slots or two indices, and this would be index zero, and this would be index one. And remember, the comma separates the different slots, and the two angle brackets indicate the start and the end of the array. I can take this further, I can do another comma, and I can say queen, I can do another comma, and I can say jack. So now my array has one, two, three, four items, so four indices, zero, one, two, and three. Now, in order to retrieve my data, let's say I wanted to print out queen. The way I would retrieve queen would be to type my array, right? Because this variable keeps track of the array. And I need to ask it for the piece of data in index 0, 1, 2. And the way we do that is use the angle brackets again, and then just simply put in 2 right there. And let me just print that out so we can see it in the console. So we get queen. If I put in array index zero, we would get ace. Now what would happen if I put in index zero, one, two, three, four? There is no item at index four. In fact, there's no slot there. So what would happen? Well, it would get a crash. And this error message is going to be very common because arrays are very prevalent in different classes and in a lot of code. And so if you're ever trying to access an item that is outside of the range of that array, you're going to get index out of range. And that's kind of what it means. I just want to demonstrate that. All right, so let's change this back to zero for now. Now let's say I wanted to tell index zero, which right now is pointing to this string ace, if I wanted to tell that index to track another piece of data, well, I could say my array and then square bracket zero, and I could assign another piece of data to it. Let's just say 10, All right? And then now let's try printing my array zero. 
And you can see that the second time I print it, the data at index zero is actually 10. I've changed it using this statement. Now the cool thing about this is that you can also add items to the array. So the array is a class itself. It's got different functions and properties. If you use dot notation, you can use the append function. And there are two different ones. Right? This one will append a complete a sequence, which is, for example, another array or something like that. Um, if you want to append a single element, then you can use this one. So I'm going to append 9 like that. And now the array will actually have five items. So now when I try to print out my array 4, I am going to get 9. Because remember, even though there are five items, arrays start at 0. So that's why the fifth item is actually at index 4. All right, and also I can always use dot notation and access the count property, which is going to return the number of elements in my array. So I can print out that property and we would get five as expected. Now I mentioned before that each slot of your array is kind of like a mini variable in that each slot keeps track of a separate piece of data. Another way that arrays are similar to variables is that an array has a data type. So just to jog your memory, if I declare a variable like this a and I assign to it 10, I cannot assign a string to that variable anymore because once I've assigned 10 to it, it's treating this variable as an int data type variable. So I can't assign a, a string type of data to that variable. So in the same vein, this array stores string objects right here, right? String data type. I cannot suddenly try to append an integer to that. That just won't work. So how did my array know that it is supposed to store strings because I didn't specify that anywhere. Well, just like with a variable, it can infer the type from the data that you assign to it. So here I've declared this array and I have put in these string values. Well, it's going to assume that it is a string data type array. Now, one question you may have is what if you want to declare an array, but you don't want to put elements in it initially, like I have here. Well, you can actually declare an array that is empty at first. So let me show you how to do that. I'm going to call this second array. And let's say that this array also stores strings. So you start with two square brackets or angle brackets. And in between there, we would normally put the elements of our array. But instead, if we want to do an empty array, we are going to declare the data type that that array should store. And then we follow that by using these two rounded brackets. Now this looks very similar to creating a new object of a class, right? Well, that's exactly what you're doing here. You are creating a new array object that stores strings. So I cannot append, let's say, an integer to that. And that's just going to cause an error because I've declared up here that this array stores strings. So I have to append something like that. Now, once you get used to using this append function to add elements into your array, you can actually use a shorthand as well. So let me show you that. And that is the plus equals operator like that. And normally you would use this to increment of an integer variable. But in this case, you can also use it to add new elements into your array. So you cannot do something like this. Let's say I want to add uh, another string to my array. You can't do that. You actually have to apply it to another array. Now this array could simply just store that single element, right? and that would be fine. Or you could append two elements at a time. Right, so now I've appended test, I've appended uh, my string and another string. So if I print out second array dot count, it should have three items, right, like that. So oftentimes you're going to see this sort of 
notation as well. And maybe sometimes it would even just be a pending one item. You still have to put these angle brackets around it because you have to use that operator and append an array. Essentially, you're taking all the items in this array and appending it to this array right here on the left hand side. Now before we leave this playground, let me just organize this code and add some comments so that you can download this playground and you can take a look at it as well. So here we have declaring arrays. I'm just going to call this one array1 and then I will also have array2 and this guy will be an empty string array and this would be um, accessing elements. This will be adding elements. Um, so you could either use append or if there are already indexes that are existing, you can assign one to a different one. Oh, I changed the name so all of these our errors now. Array one. I'm getting the number of items here. All right, and here's another example of adding elements. This guy would be array two. And you can actually also remove elements. So I realized that didn't show you that. So you can say array one, uh, let's say dot remove so you can actually just remove everything or you can remove the item at a particular index and that will actually shorten the array so if I say uh, array one remove at zero you know I'm removing the first element then print array one dot count is going to be oh, I appended a bunch of stuff to it so I have zero one two three and then four, I have five elements. And then if I remove one, then I'm left with four. That's correct. Yeah. All right, in this lesson, you learned about arrays and how they can be used to store a collection of values. You learned how to declare arrays either with data or as empty. You learned about how to assign data into an array, how to access that data at a specific array index, and also how to update the data at a specific index as well. Finally, you learned how to remove data from an array. I highly recommend that you download the worksheet below to get some extra practice with working with arrays. Also, if you want to read the documentation for arrays from Apple's official language guide, I'll link to that below as well. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel by hitting the subscribe button below. And if you don't want to miss a single video, make sure you tap on that bell icon as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next lesson.